So my talk is about paternal sex allocation in mammals, and today I will cover a result that we published in Evolution Letters last year, as well as some new findings that we've just uncovered in a long-term breeding program of an endangered Western Australian marsupial. Sex allocation is defined as the allocation of parental resources to male versus female reproduction in a sexual species. As a species, humans are fairly invested in controlling their own reproductive destiny. And since ancient times, we have actually been trying to influence the sex of our own offspring. For example, Greek physicians offered that men should tie a string around their left testicle if they wanted a boy and the right testicle if they wanted a girl. In medieval times, the formula became even more bizarre when alchemists recommended drinking the blood of a lion and then having sex under the full moon to sire a son. In more recent times, we've witnessed preferences on a cultural level. For example, a preference for sons following China's decision to implement the birth planning policy. So I'm not sure how successful any of these strategies have been for humans, but for species beyond our own, it could be argued that offspring sex is a phenotypic trait that will have the greatest influence on an individual's inclusive fitness. The theory of sex allocation is clear. It explains why most species produce equal numbers of sons and daughters and highlights situations that select for deviation from this norm. So it began with Fisher, who suggested that an equal sex ratio should be favoured by frequency dependent selection. Modifications of Fisher's assumptions later revealed how certain circumstances could lead to an ad adaptive bias in favour of one sex over the other. So today I'm just going to focus on one of these theories, which explains differences in sex ratios and offspring fitness in relation to paternal attractiveness. The prediction is that females should bias the sex ratio of their offspring in favour of sons if they are made to more attractive and better quality males because their sons will inherit these paternal traits and they themselves experience high reproductive success. As an extension of this hypothesis, it has also been suggested that at a post-mating level, more fertile males might produce more competitive Y chromosome bearing sperm and therefore produce more sons. Or that females actually use mechanisms of cryptic female choice to bias paternity toward more fertile males and produce sons that have their father's high fertility. Mediating offspring sex ratios is an effective strategy for individuals to maximise their fitness within their local environment. But the local environment is a stochastic and ever-changing entity. So producing males under one scenario might be beneficial, but not so beneficial under a different scenario. An individual's local environment will be governed by both ecological and social components. So ecological, um, the ecological environment includes both biotic and abiotic features, all of which can either directly or indirectly influence sex allocation strategies. The conspecifics in the local environment provide a link to the social environment, at least in terms of influencing individuals during later sexual development. So although individuals have the potential to respond to stim uh, external stimuli throughout development, there are often critical stages during ontogeny where the phenotype is particularly sensitive to environmental variation. In mammals, these stages have identified to be uh, during the pre and postnatal phase, as well as during sexual development, um, following independence of their mother and prior to sexual maturity. Differences in the social environment environment may be due to variation in the density of males and females, fluctuation in age cohorts, for example, many adults versus many juveniles, or changes in immigration and emigration rates, um, for example, an influx of unfamiliar individuals. Historically, research has focused on maternal control over offspring sex ratios, which makes sense uh, where there is full maternal control, such as in um, many haplodiploid species and also in birds where females are the heterogametic sex. The problem with mammals is that males are the heterogametic sex, but fertilisation and offspring development occurs within the female. And so sex allocation uh, is more of an even parental playing field, uh, probably compared to other taxa. 
Offspring sex in mammals can actually be influenced at a number of reproductive stages from biases in the sperm sex ratio to postnatal differential maternal investment. And then of course, there is a multitude of extrinsic factors that can be influencing these uh, mechanisms. So the assumption that equal proportions of X and Y chromosome bearing sperm are produced during spermatogenesis or maintained during sperm storage has been challenged by recent research that has demonstrated otherwise. This has been seen in diverse species, including pygmy hippos and the white-footed mouse. So uh, what we wondered is whether the sperm sex ratio is a plastic trait that might respond to variation in the social environment. Uh, this work was led by master student Misha Lavoie and also involved the expertise of Jamie Tedeschi and Paco Garcia Gonzalez. So we set out to address the question, is essentially, is the sperm sex ratio a plastic trait? We manipulated the social environment of males through their sexual development. So we took brothers from, uh, two brothers from a litter and noted the litter sex ratio um, and then placed one of those brothers into a male dominated environment and the other brother into a female dominated environment. So we created these environments simply by housing uh, our focal males in close proximity to either uh, males or females and the focal males also received um, some soil chaff from their neighbours um, to really create a variation in uh, the environment that the two uh, treatments of focal males were experiencing. So we maintain them under these conditions from independence of their mother at three weeks of age up to sexual maturity at about 14 weeks of age, at which stage we extracted the sperm and then quantified sperm sex ratios using a quantitative PCR protocol. Uh, what our uh, experiment essentially returned was that males developed either into studs or duds. So males in the male dominated environment uh, grew to become larger in body mass. They had longer anogenital distances, which uh, is used as an index of masculinity and testosterone levels. And they also had larger testes than our males that developed in a female dominated environment. So essentially our males uh, in the male dominated environment uh, ended up with phenotypes that were well prepared for male male competition compared to their brothers that were reared in a female dominated environment. We also saw differences uh, in sperm sex ratio between the treatments. So we have on this axis, the proportion of Y chromosome bearing sperm and down here we have litter sex ratio. So males reared in a male dominated environment tended to produce higher levels of Y chromosome bearing sperm compared to males produced in a female dominated environment. We also found the cool effect of a increase in Y chromosome bearing sperm as litter sex ratios became uh, more male biased. So this is the, the litter sex ratio of the males from which they came from. So we uncovered the novel result that exposure to both pre and postnatal male dominated environments resulted in the production of greater proportions of Y chromosome bearing sperm. Uh, these results confirm that social cues perceived during development can lead to adjustments in the sperm sex ratio at sexual maturity, which suggests that the sperm sex ratio is a malleable or plastic phenotypic trait. And it kind of lends support to the idea that this could potentially be the mechanis a mechanistic basis of male-driven sex allocation. But could we provide any support for the male fertility hypothesis? Existing evidence in support of this hypothesis comes from an investigation of red deer, which showed that males that induced higher rates of pregnancy were also more likely to sire sons. As we had testis mass, which is a reliable proxy for male fertility level, we had the opportunity to look at uh, whether this was the case. So whether more fertile males produce higher proportions of Y chromosome bearing sperm. When we included testis mass in our model, it failed to explain any variation in sperm sex ratio. 
However, visualising the data or visualising the relationship between tests, mass and sperm sex ratio tells a different story. So this is something that we're um, going to look into further in our future research. So sex allocation research is important in a number of different fields. Um, I sit here in the evolutionary ecology um, window. However, my interests do extend into conservation, uh, the conservation of biodiversity. So with this in mind, um, I just wanted to touch briefly on a project that we've just completed, which utilised a long-term data set of a successful breeding program um, at the Perth Zoo, which is helping to save an endangered Western Australian marsupial, the numbat. So numbats have experienced massive range contractions due to reductions in su suitable habitat, as well as heavy predation by introduced species. Like most captive programs, the numbat colony is maintained over a monogamous mating regime, which is different to what we observe in the wild, where individuals mate multiply and sexual selection is prevalent at both the pre and post mating level. So what we did is we looked for offspring sex ratio skews based on parental origin. So that was where the mothers and fathers had either been born in the wild or born in captivity uh, as a product of that captive breeding program. Although there was no effect of maternal origin on offspring sex ratio, we did find a skew toward the production of daughters among males that were born in captivity. So, we wonder if this is evidence of a reduction in male fertility and a corresponding bias toward female offspring with the removal of post-mating sexual selection. And this is certainly something that we want to look at, uh, explore more in our future work, and we do intend to look at sperm sex ratios in numbats. Importantly, the numbat breeding program is managed in such a way that captive bull males only rarely contribute to the ex situ population. So there's little chance that this paternal effect on offspring sex ratio will manifest in any kind of detrimental way. So on that happy note, I'd just like to thank my collaborators, those that helped on the technical aspects of these projects, and I'd like to acknowledge my funding bodies. Thank you.